the Cavalcade of America. Starring Ginger Rogers in the house near Little Dock Street. Now, the house near Little Dock Street, starring Ginger Rogers as Lydia Darrow, time 1777. Place, British Headquarters, Philadelphia. Reports on the woman Lydia Darrow. Residence, Flame House near Little Dock Street. Occupation, housewife. Political affiliation, friendly. No evidence of sympathy to the American cause. Orders from General Howe. Colonel Robert Patterson will be quartered during the British occupation of Philadelphia at the house of Mrs. Lydia Darrow, near Little Dock Street. Hmm. Good. Mr. Banks, come in. Are you alone, Mrs. Darrow? No, uh, Colonel Patterson's upstairs in his room. Your brother's with me. He's sneaking through the lines. Philip, yes. oh no. Well, I expected a warm welcome in that from my own sister. Oh, Philip, Philip, come, come in inside quickly. Oh, but you, you shouldn't be here. Not now, it's too dangerous. Danger isn't any worse than hunger to a starving rebel. But don't you know what's happened? Yes, I heard when I got to Mr. Banks' print shop tonight. So you're housing the red coat. You have no choice, lad. The colonel's billeted here. Oh, I could, I could throw a teapot in his face, but what can I do? Just give a hungry man a meal and I'll be off back to White House. Here. Let's be quiet. Here's bread and meat and milk. Sit down, Philip. Oh, food. That looks good, Lydia. Is it very bad at White Marsh? I don't know how General Washington's holding the troops together, Lydia. Not an overcoat or a sound pair of boots in a regiment. Rations once a day. Why else do you think I'd take the chance to sneak home? Eat, eat, just eat. And, and take these loaves of bread with you. Will you have enough, Yes, please? I can get food now. What? Are you all right? Yes, of course. Oh, but you mustn't come back, Philip. It, it's not safe for you. That depends on my stomach. I hear someone upstairs. I'll okay. go along. I'll go along and take the food with me. Please, please hurry. He's coming. At least the red coats won't get this. Hurry, Philip. I'm off. Goodbye, Lydia. Take care. Mr. Banks, help me get back. I I will. Thank God, speed, Philip. Another cup of tea, Colonel Patterson? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Excellent tea, <laughs> Mrs. Darrow. Excellent. I believe good tea is in the pot, not to me. Don't you, Colonel? <laughs> My belief precisely. You know, you make this uncivilized pursuit of war it's Exceedingly pleasant, Mrs. Darrow. <laughs> Why not? You're a guest in my house. I love company. I always have. And I haven't been as comfortable since I left London. Thank you, Colonel. But I, I do hope it's over soon. It's, it's so inconvenient to run a house with a town full of soldiers. Are you getting supplies, ma'am? Oh, yes. But you know, your dinner parties do require a lot of food. Oh, my dear lady, you shan't be put to trouble. Here. Here's a pass that I'll sign for you. Oh. It'll permit you to go wherever you wish outside the city for supplies. Why, why, thank you, Colonel. And don't worry. Washington can't hold that ragtag and bobtail army of his together through the window. They're freezing out of White Marsh now. Yes, I've, I've heard. Foolish, isn't it? When a house can be so pleasant and a hostess so charming. <laughs> Colonel, what a flatterer you are. Well, I simply realize there are more reasons for keeping the colonies... Then His Majesty suspects. <laughs> oh, Colonel. Well, that brings me to some business, Mrs. Darrow. I shall want the house tonight for a staff meeting. The entire house? We wouldn't think of disturbing your family, Mrs. Darrow. We simply ask that you and your daughter retire to the second floor. We shall hold our meeting here in your parlor by the open fireplace. Well, you'll be most welcome, of course, Colonel. I should like everyone to retire by 8 o'clock. 8? 8 o'clock? Well, this is an important meeting, Mrs. Darrow. I must have your word that we won't be disturbed. Oh, oh, I see, Colonel. Very well, you, you have my word. You've been most cooperative, Mrs. Darrow. I was sure we could rely on you. There you are, 
Oh, yes. The wine is on the side table. There's extra wood in the chest and the fresh candles in the desk drawer. Good, good. You've done as handsomely, Mrs. Darrell. I must say, Colonel, you found good digging. Well, it's the most comfortable house in Philadelphia. Thanks to the lovely lady who runs it. Oh, Colonel. Oh, now, uh, is there anything else you wish? Just your word, madam, that your household is retired. Oh, it has, Colonel Patterson, just as you ordered. And I shall go to my own room immediately. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I... I do have to see that the fires are safe and the door is bolted later. Would you uh, call me when the meeting is over? Uh, I'd like to do that, Colonel. <laughs> Mrs. Darrell, I apologize for Major Andrews. Oh, come, Colonel. You can't be so miserly with a charming lady. Don't be a fool, Andrews. Oh, I was only jesting. Well, but um, perhaps I can see more of Mrs. Darrell when we get back. When you get back? Are you going away, Prince Patterson? Oh, not very far, Mrs. Darrell, just... Just in the line of duty. Oh, uh, it seems such bad weather for you to be traveling. The soldier's life, madam. But don't you worry. I'll see that you're not imposed upon. Gentlemen, we shall proceed with our meeting. Thank you, thank you very much. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, Good if night. there's anything you wish, I shall be upstairs with Susanna. I say, Andrews, you almost let the cat out of the bag talking about going away. Oh, what would that mean to her? Obviously, the only place we'd go is after Washington. Colonel Patterson has perfect confidence in the lady. I do. I've heard she has conscientious objections to war. She tells me that her own brother's hiding up in the rebels now. You see, gentlemen? Mrs. Darrow is a lady and a friend. I expect every officer on this staff to show her the proper respect. I like my quarters, gentlemen. And I don't intend they shall be disturbed. <laughs> now, if you please your attention. I've been instructed. Mommy, why am I sleeping upstairs here in your room tonight? Because some gentlemen are meeting downstairs and they want the whole first floor. The red coat? Yes, darling. Some British officers. Now it's time for you to say your prayers. Mommy. Are they going to shoot us? Oh, of course not, darling. Now kneel down beside the bed. I'm cold. Well, there's some embers left in the fireplace. Now, come on, say your prayers, dear. Yes, Mommy. Jesus, shepherd of small children, keep this house from harm tonight. God us. Mommy. Well, go on, Susanna. Go on. Guard us with thy love and kindness. Safe until... Mommy, why are you talking? Talking? Yes, yeah, we're by the fireplace. Come over here and listen. Yes, it's coming up from downstairs. Let's see. Let's see. Too. It's Colonel Patterson. I can hear him as plain as Please, listen, Jerry. These plans are secret. No one will have them but the officers in this room. Here are the orders that General Howard sent you. The entire British army will move from Philadelphia toward White Marsh at 11 o'clock tomorrow night. Now listen. The entire British army will move from Philadelphia toward White Marsh at 11 tomorrow night. The van will be commanded by North Carolina, riding the general first, followed by the first third. Susanna, come, come, come back to bed, dear. Yes, Mommy. Did you understand what those men said? Not exactly, Mommy. Something dreadful is going to happen. Something very dreadful. What? I can't tell you now, but, darling, you must do exactly as I say. Yes. You must not tell a soul that you and I heard the gentleman talking downstairs through the fireplace. No, Mommy. And in the morning, even before the sun is up, I have to go away. Where? I, I have to go to the mill to get some flour. But we have flour. We just got some. I, I, I need more. So tomorrow, before anyone is up... I'm going to get it. Do you understand? Can I come? No, dear. You, you must stay here and see the house for me. Mommy! Get under the covers quickly. Here beside me. Don't make a sound. Yes. Yes, who is it? Mrs. Darrow. Oh, oh, Colonel Patterson. Oh, uh, just a moment. Yes, Colonel Patterson. Can you hear me through the door, Mrs. Oh, Darrell? yes. Yes, indeed. I'm so sorry to disturb you, madam, but the staff is leaving. Oh, yes, thank you. I'll, I'll be right down. May I help you with the fires? No, no, thank you, Colonel. I, I can manage. Good night, madam. Good night, Colonel Patterson. Mommy. There. He's gone. Now, Susanna, do you remember what I told you? Yes. 
You're not even to tell Willie or Jack what we heard the officer say. No, Mommy. No, Mommy. If anyone asks for me, what will you say? You've gone to get flowers. That's right, my darling. And God grant I may be in time. In the house near Little Dock Street, Philadelphia, home of Lydia Darrow, during the American Revolution, Colonel Robert Patterson of the British staff has been quartered. Lydia has overheard British plans for destroying American forces at nearby White Marsh. So the following morning at dawn, she approaches the British sentry at city limits. Halt, madam. You can't go no further. But I, I'm going to the flour mill. Uh, no citizens are permitted beyond the city limits. Well, I, I have a pass. Oh, well, let me see it. Oh, here. Uh, pass for supply for Mrs. Lydia Darrow. Signed, Colonel Robert Patterson, adjutant to General Al. Oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Oh, certainly. Oh, I must say, you do your marketing early, ma'am. Your officers have good appetites. Good day. Mrs. Dara, come inside. I want 25 pounds of flour. What for sure, ma'am. Is anyone around? No, not this early. Mr. Jennings, can I trust you? Trust me? Me who's sending every other pound of flour I grind to General Washington himself. I, I want you to tell me the shortest way to Chestnut Hill. Chestnut Hill? Well, you are not going out I there. I have no time, Mr. Jennings. Just tell me the way. Well, there is a back road through the woods below that's the mill. That, that's what I want. It's pretty dangerous for a woman, ma'am. Now, now, where do I go? You'll come to a dead oak. Yes. You turn right and follow the footpath. I'll find it. Oh, ma'am, but this shouldn't be starting now. Not on foot. There's a storm blowing out. Oh, that'll help, too. I'll be back for the flower. I hope. Well, well, well. Good morning, little lady. Is your mother in the kitchen? Mommy's not here, Colonel Patterson. Not here? Where's she gone? She's gone to the miller to get flour. Oh, no. that surprises me. Why, she got flour only last week? She said she needed some more. Ah, we must be putting more of a strain on the family larder than I realized. Well, come over here and sit on my lap. No, thank you. Why, I thought you liked my shiny boots. I'd like them better if my Uncle Philip had them. <laughs> they teach you young patriots at an early age, don't they? Tell me, who went with your mother? She went alone. Alone? Your mother can't carry a heavy load of flour home by herself. She can, too. That's rather odd. Well, we're not going to let her. Order left. Yes, sir. I want you to saddle up and go out to the flour mill on the north road. North road, sir? Yes. Find Mrs. Darrow and help bring back the flour that she's carrying. The wind's sharpening, Colonel Craig. Yeah, looks like a real blizzard. Well, at least it'll keep Howe in his warm Philadelphia bed. Yeah, uh, hear what old Ben Franklin said? British haven't taken Philadelphia. Philadelphia's taken the British. That's not our concern at the moment. Let's get on with the patrol. Well, my concern's with a pair of boots with sound soles in them. Colonel Clay. What is it? Look. You're in the snow. Huh? Footprints. Yep. And recent ones. Going right past those bushes. And the size of them is a woman's shoe. Wait a minute. Someone up ahead. Who goes there? It is a woman. Maybe she's bringing food to us. Yeah, maybe she's one of them who isn't feeding the British. What are you doing out here, ma'am? Oh, you're American, thank heaven. Who are you? My name's Jane. Lydia Darrow. I've, I've walked all the way from Philadelphia. You walked out here from Philadelphia? Yes, and I, I have some information. Information? How much any food? I have a message for General Washington. Oh, you have? Well, the general will be very Let happy. Let your pass. I, I have no pass for the American lines. Only the British. So the British let you take this little walk out here to see us. Please. Please, won't you listen to me? I have terribly important information. What kind of information? A British officer is quartered in my house. Last night, I overheard something General Washington must know. Colonel, this is either another crazy woman or else it's a red coat. Madam, I'm Colonel Thomas Craig of the 3rd Pennsylvania Regiment. If you have any information, give it to me. Then may I see you alone? Don't listen to her, Colonel. Send her on her way. Colonel, my information is of a grievous importance. So you're walking around out here in a blizzard on a back road looking for some Americans to give it to? Please, I beseech you, Colonel. Let me talk to you alone. Let me get rid of her, Colonel. Just a minute. 
Come over here, madam. All right. What is your information? Last night, the British held a staff meeting in my house. I overheard them say Chestnut Hill is weakly fortified. What? They have made plans to attack you at dawn tomorrow and destroy the whole army. Is this true? And God is my witness. Well, how can you prove it? Prove it? Colonel Craig, in a matter of hours, the British will march from Philadelphia. We haven't any report of troop movement. But it's true. I heard them. Well, it's a very clever way to get us to concentrate what guns we have with the British motor. Oh, dear heaven, how can I make you believe me? I think you'd better go along, madam. This is no place for a woman. Why should I trick you? Why should you Philadelphia people entertain the British? Feed them. Keep them warm. Because we have no choice. Colonel Craig, I have a brother at White Marsh now. Oh? Who is he? Philip Barrington, Lieutenant Infantry. What regiment? The 2nd Pennsylvania. We'll check on him. All right, men. You... You still oh. don't believe me. You let the British just walk in Your here. information is very interesting, madam. We shall have it investigated. Lieutenant, throw this woman back to the road. <laughs> Patterson's gone. I hope he never comes back. Susanna, would you try to tell me again just what Colonel Patterson said before he went away? Oh, he was angry. Well, yes, dear, but uh, do you know why? He was angry because the man he sent to help carry your flower couldn't find you. Well, now, can you tell me exactly what Colonel Patterson said? He said the man was a dope. What's a dope? Uh, a stupid person, dear. Well, now, what else did he say? I told you, Mommy. He said that... The dope must have gone to a tavern to get out of the storm. And then, what did he say anything else? He said he couldn't understand it. His face was as red as his coat, Mommy. <laughs> I see. Susanna, I want you to do something for me, dear. Yes, Mommy? Run down the street to the print shop. Tell Mr. Banks I want to see him right away. <laughs> Susanna said you wanted me. I've got to talk to you. Is something wrong? Have you heard any news of the British troops? Well, no more than the whole city knows. They marched the army out two nights ago toward White Marsh. Nobody's heard a word since. You you don't know what's happened at White Marsh? No. <sighs> Say, you're upset, Mrs. Darrow. Uh, I I have to tell you something, Mr. Banks. Yes? I, I have to tell someone. What is it, ma'am? Three nights ago in this house, I overheard the British plan this attack. And at dawn, I went to the American lines to warn them. You went. It doesn't matter now. The point is, the Americans didn't believe me. The devil they did. If they didn't prepare for it, the British will have wiped them out. The city's like the dead, Mrs. Darrow. But I'll try to find out something. Now, what about yourself? Have you thought what could happen if the British find out what you did? Oh, I haven't had time for that. What's that? Sounds like drums. It is drums. The British troops. Look out the window. It looks like they're coming back. Oh, what does that mean? They can't have had time for a full battle. Look at them. Lines of them. It looks as if the Americans did believe you, Mrs. Darrow. Oh, oh. I'm going to stay with you. Oh, but you can't. You can't. Colonel Patterson will be back in. He will be suspicious if you're here. Well, that couldn't be the Colonel now. I can't leave you here alone. You're in danger. I, I'll talk to him. I'll, I'll be all right. No, no, Mrs. Darrow. Oh, you can't help me. Nobody can help me. Now, please, go oh, hurry. Uh, hurry. Hurry out to the kitchen. The back door. Oh, Mrs. Darrow. Hurry, please. Oh, all right, man. If that's what you want, I'll go. But take care. Mrs. Darrow. Why, Colonel Patterson, come right in. This, this is a surprise. Is it? Yes, I, I didn't expect you back. I, I haven't anything prepared. Madam, I, I must have a talk with you. Why, of course, Colonel. You don't mind, I'll lock this door. Why, Colonel Patterson, whatever is the matter? Don't you know? Why, no. Then I'll tell you. Recently, General Howe had information that the American positions at White Marsh were ill defended. So three days ago, we marched out for a surprise attack there. Did you really? Today, we marched back. Oh, you did? What happened? When we reached Chestnut Hill, 
We found the American position heavily reinforced and defended with cannon. Was it really? Yes. Yes, it was. They'd made fools of us. Or someone had. Madam, the night before our march, a secret staff meeting was held in this house. Oh, yes, I remember. It was very important, you said. The plans for this attack were made at that meeting. Yes, Colonel Patterson? We have reason to believe that those plans reached the Americans. Oh, Colonel Patterson, through one of your own gentlemen? My men? Certainly not, Mrs. Darrow. My officers are above reproach. Oh, please forgive me, I... Mrs. Darrow, I must ask you a few questions, and I shall expect you to be as direct as possible in answering them. Of course, Colonel. Where were the members of your household during that meeting? Why, you yourself asked us to retire to the second floor at 8 o'clock. What I ask and what happened may be two different things, madam. I think we may discuss this within the bounds of good manners, Colonel Patterson. I beg your pardon, madam. Mrs. Darrow, was anyone up in the house that night after 8 o'clock? Why, yes, I was. You were? Yes. What were you doing up? Susanna was sharing my room with me, and the child was cold after the fire went out, and I was up with her. Yet I had to knock on your door several times. Colonel Patterson, you asked me to be direct. I think it would be simpler if you were direct, too. Just whom do you suspect in this house? My daughter, Susanna? Please, Mrs. Darrow. Then that leaves me. And you left the house at dawn? I went to the flour mill. You can prove that by asking I'm not to... trying to prove anything. But I have a general, a general how to answer to. Oh, yes, of course. General how. Is it possible that General Howe could have made a mistake about testing a suit? General Howe make a mistake, madam? Well, uh, couldn't he have been misinformed about the American position? After all, you have no proof that anybody warned the Americans. Ah, uh, that's very true, madam. No proof at all. Certainly no proof that one helpless woman could get through a blizzard to the American line. I had all I could do to reach the flour mill. <laughs> you are very adroit, madam. I can? Yes, indeed. So you think General Howe was misinformed. That not only eliminates you, but tells me what to report to General Howe. I? What do I know about these matters? I suspect a great deal more than we shall ever find out. Oh, you flatter a mere woman, General. I respect a clever one. Clever? Oh, Colonel Patterson, I'm just a simple housewife. Now, won't you sit down and let me bring you a nice cup of tea? Oh. 